Back in 2017, Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo reinforced one thing in the city's final push to host the 2024 Summer Olympics, that its famous river, the Seine, would be a key fixture of the Games, including an historic Olympics opening ceremony. See, this is one reason I wanted to go. It's the Sin River. I thought it was the sign, but yeah, it's the Sin River. Now, I've done a cruise on the Sin River. I went from uh, right down from the Eiffel Tower. You go down the stairs, and they have, like, different little tour boats. You get on there, and they take you all up and down the river. It take you past, like, uh, Notre Dame. You go down towards uh, the museum where uh, the Mona Lisa is, and then it'll take you, like, around. So. You get on there, it's pretty cheap. Try to go during the summertime, man. I went in uh, I went in late August. It gets kind of chilly out on that water. The first held outside of a stadium, for which French officials initially said there is no plan B, and that open water swimming events would be held in it. It's not hard to see why. The Seine runs along some of Paris's most famous landmarks, like the Eiffel Tower and Notre Dame. The thing is, swimming... Yeah, that Notre Dame right there. Notre Dame. Yeah, see right here. Well, I went down on all of them. There's different type of uh, little cruises you can get on and like little tourist things. I went on the one right by the Eiffel Tower, right when you go down there. And I actually seen, uh, man, it was wild though. Man, there's a lot of Africans over there. But like, there's a lot of Turks too. So when you go to Paris, be careful because pickpocketing is like their number one crime. And they do a lot of hustling over there. But you can get some nice knockoff, like memorabilia. You know, you ain't supposed to buy from them. You're supposed to go buy from the shops. But you just buy it from them. You get it for like two, three euros instead of going to the shop and getting it for 12. You know, I'm getting all my stuff off the street. I don't give a damn. But you got to watch out. But they were getting chased by the police. And one of them jumped off the bridge. But he didn't jump off the bridge into the water. He missed it and landed on the concrete. Tore his shit up. It was bad, too. I was there with my old lady. That's when the first time she came over to Europe. We went over to Paris for a birthday. Sheesh. Some of Paris's most famous landmarks, like the Eiffel Tower and Notre Dame. The thing is, swimming has been banned in the Seine for a century. And that's because the River Seine has human sh** in it. Oui, pour moi, c'est un non-sens total. Je pense que la Seine est encore polluée et je suis pas certaine que les nageurs s'en tirent indemnes à la suite de cette, euh, cette séance de nage. Like many urban waterways around the world, the Seine takes on sewage overflow during heavy rain, when cities' underground sewer systems get overwhelmed with stormwater. Hidalgo even said she would take a swim in the Seine herself ahead of the Games. French President Emmanuel Macron promised the same thing. They say they're confident because of an enormous underground infrastructure project they've built near the river to ensure as much as possible that it won't sh** on their parade. <laughs> this isn't the first time Olympic open water swimming events, the triathlon, paratriathlon, and marathon swimming we're at risk of being canceled last minute due to water quality issues. We saw some of the same headlines during the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo and the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. In both cases, they pulled it off and Paris hopes to do the same. But the journey to clean up the Seine hasn't come without a few setbacks. A preliminary event in the river scheduled for August, 2023 was canceled when water analysis showed an unacceptable amount of E. coli in the water. E. coli. E. coli. So this is what I used to have to do right here. This is my job right here. You know, I was a G with it. You know, say I'm one of the best to ever do it. So doing water sampling for E. coli, that was that was one of my like primary duties. Once a week, well, once a month, I'd have a week where I'd have to go out and do water sampling for the base. That's what I went over to Poland to do. I did that for United States of America. Did a hell of a job at it too. All I got was a, you know, saying a certificate of appreciation. They didn't give me no promotion, or nothing. But yeah, here goes. Uh, here's a false positive on E. coli right here. This is one uh, I had to do a false positive for the newspaper on base. So you know they did a whole article on me. You know what I mean? So this is the false positive right here for E. coli. Um, well, every now and then we got to just run a, a a false positive on our water sample. So maybe. Once a month, we'll just take a batch of water samples that we did around base and we'll run one just to make sure. 
but yeah, you you um to test for E. coli, you take a clean, you gotta do a clean grab, which is just one up under. Once you get back, you pop this little, you can call it food, but basically, you know, saying to show if the E. coli is in there. You pop that, you put it in the incubator for 24 hours, not to exceed 48 hours. If it comes back lit up like this, then you have a positive for E. coli. That means you got to stop all the water. No one could drink that water. We got to go upstream, downstream. We got to flush the pipes, call up CE. So this is what I used to do. So like when I seen this, I like I got I got to watch this because this is what this is what I did, man. I, I used to love this stuff, man. You know what I mean? I used to love this. E. coli are bacteria that originate in the intestinal. E. coli are bacteria that originate in the intestinal tracts of warm-blooded animals. Presence of them in water is a strong indicator fecal of matter. recent fecal contamination, yeah. which can make you very, very, very sick. In order for an open water swim event to be given the go-ahead, water analysis reports must be submitted no more than 48 hours. When I tell y'all, 24 to no, no longer than 48. After 48, it'll start going away. But that's when you have a little sample that'll start to, you know, saying go away because you didn't, you're putting it in the incubator because you want it to heat up. But you always test, you always test, always, always, always test the water. You know what I mean? Now, the tap water here in Germany, believe it or not, grade A. Grade A. They don't use fluoride like they do in the States, but grade A. The chlorine, all water that comes from your faucets, they put chlorine. Over at the water treatment plants, all water has chlorine in it. Now, it's just very small amounts, but they got to put chlorine in the water. It just, it just has to happen. Also, an EPA fact. There is no regulation on bottled water. So when you see it say, hey, this bottled water is from the springs or this is Irish spring. The pH level is at 9.5, 9.5. All that is bullshit. There's no EPA regulation. They could be getting that shit from a lake. <laughs> they could be getting that from a lake. That's why as far as bioenvironmental goes, whenever we're in a deployed location, say we get 100 pallets of water, we got to sample 10% of all the water because there's no regulation on that. But that's just that's just something to throw out. Now, purified water, that's different. But I mean, you still the companies like purified water that comes from the companies to good still get checked. Let's just say you go to like Culligan. Culligan has they have deals. Well, they don't have deals, but like Culligan water, where you get the jugs, they deliver it to you. They work with the EPA. There's regulators that come out and do sampling because they just like all of the <clears throat> even though the German like water isn't under. They aren't under our command or anything. We have an agreement with them that we can go and test their water because it's being supplied to the Americans on base. So that's why we would go out to the water treatment. Now, if it was up under like we have little we have miniature water treatment plant. Well, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail for OPSEC reasons, obviously, on basis, but. We do water sampling around the base. So if there is something wrong, we will notify. And then we'll have to go and talk to the, the bigger water treatment facilities off base. Because all the water is coming from different type of rivers. You know what I mean? It's all going to water. I mean, from the rivers. They're filtering it out. It's going through three or four different filtration systems. Then it's going to sit in this reservoir. Now, these reservoirs, they're probably, yeah, you can get like 80,000, 100,000 in these reservoirs. And they this water just sitting in there. It's a big concrete reservoir up underground. It's cool as hell in there, too, about 70 degrees. You go in there, and it's just water. And when you look in there, it's like you can't even see the water. It's so fucking clear in there. It just looks like it's an open uh, bay, it's just like an open concrete bay. I mean, you're looking through it through the, you know what I'm saying, through the window. I've only actually went in one one time, but I didn't go, like, submerged. I just went down to the, the ladder platform right above the water. But that was cool. Hours prior to competition. Those samples cannot exceed more than 1,000 CFU colony forming units of E. coli per 100 milliliters of water and 400 CFU of Enterococci, another bacteria associated with feces. 
Test results published just four months ahead of the games showed that river samples taken at this bridge, the site of open water swimming events, still failed to get under that crucial 1,000 number for permissible levels of E. coli. You can see where this contamination is coming from by taking a look at this 1852 map, showing how the original Paris sewer system was built. It dumps right into the Seine. Which is gross, but it's not a problem that's unique to Paris. Many urban sewer systems work this way. Before I get into that, though, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. I don't know and help you to talk to a therapist. And when you do water sampling, you always want to do you always want to do a clean catch. A clean a clean catch is when you just go up under the sink one time. You don't want to fill it up and then like try to fill it up. So you got to go up under, turn the water on. But whenever you do water sampling, you got to take the aerator off. You know, the little thing that screws on the bottom that's called an aerator on the bottom of your sink. You got to take that off. You got to flush this. You know, say so you got to flush the system. So you got to let it run for at least a minute before you collect a sample. But you do water. You do a cold sample because E. coli starts to produce in warmer water. That's why we got to put it in the incubator to see if there's anything in there. So you do a clean catch with the cold water up to uh, I think it's Philly 50 milliliters. Take it back to the shop. Make sure you have your gloves on at all times because you don't want to contaminate. You don't know what's on your hands. Unscrew, pop it in there. Shake, 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 shake. Put it in there. Document your time. Come back tomorrow. Ding. Turn off the lights. You turn on the blue light. See if it's fluorescent. We good to go, baby. Go ahead. Document that down. Put that in the system. Write up the report. Send it to your NCOIC or you send it to your captain. Tell captain the water is good. Now, if you want to go more in depth, there's a place called Lion Stool down here, and we do even more. We we test for metals. So you always got to test for metals in water also. You got your lead. You got to test for arsenic. You got uh, you got to test for mercury. So with those tests, those tests are way more stringent than just a regular water, like, from the tap. So with those, we got to go collect them. We got to put those on ice because we got to transport them back down an hour here to the big laboratory. Now, that laboratory, I was trying to get a job in, like, when I first got out the military because I was always working hand in hand with them because I would be the one that I would always volunteer. Hey, let me drive the truck down there. Cause if we come down here, you can go on base and they actually got the real food. Cause we was at a smaller base, go down there. I'd be in the laboratory talking to the, uh, the little scientists and the chemists. That's, that's your type. Month. Many cities that built sewer systems in the mid-1800s to early 1900s, like Paris did, installed what's known as a combined sewer system. In a combined sewer system, the same pipes that handle wastewater also handle stormwater, which gets collected through storm drains in the street. Everything gets sent along to be processed at water treatment facilities and then cycles out to the natural environment. When it rains a lot, the sewers can get too full. When this happens, rather than flooding back into the street, the excess combined wastewater and stormwater gets partially redirected to a nearby waterway, which is why E. coli levels in water can spike dramatically in the hours following heavy rain. It's because that water was recently contaminated with shit. So you'll see signs near combined sewer outfalls that prohibit swimming after heavy rain. Yeah, no swimming. If that happens during the Olympics, it could mean canceling open water swimming events. So Paris built a giant tank. This 13.2 million gallon capacity underground reservoir and tunnel is. See, that's what the reservoirs look like on the inside. 1.5 billion US dollar infrastructure. But when you fill these up with like all of this is just be, well, this isn't going to be, this isn't going to be clean water. So the reservoirs I'm talking about where they store the clean water, you know, saying the potable water that you can drink. So you got non potable and then you got potable water. Potable is drinkable, non potable. But. So this is what the reservoirs look like. And if you see up here, this is like I went down to this part inside of one of them, uh, like an 80,000 gallon. It was 80,000 gallon because it was like 100 and something liters that could they go off of that. But, yeah, I went down to like this point right here. But when you look in here, it looks like there ain't even water. You can see straight through and it's low light in there, too, because, of course, you don't want any heat or anything. So nothing to start growing. Your project that aims to clean up the sand. It's called the Austerlitz Basin, built near the Austerlitz metro station right by the Seine, with the tunnel running under the river to the sewers. French officials opened the basin less than three months ahead of the Olympics opening ceremony, which is scheduled for July 26th. I'll let this guy explain how it works. The mélange d'eau usée et fluviale pendant l'épisode plus intense va arriver par ce tuyau, va remplir le bassin jusqu'à sa capacité, et 
quand le bassin la pluie est terminée, le bassin est vidé par un système de pompage et des tuyaux beaucoup plus petits qui vont se vider que dans euh, les gouttes du boulevard de l'hôpital. Basically, the system will hold excess water so the sewers don't get overwhelmed in a heavy rainstorm. And then it will methodically release the water back through the sewer system. Giant reservoirs like this have worked in other cities with big populations. Oh, that's dope. So the reservoir that they got, when it rains, all of the extra, the excess rain is going to go in there. And then it's just going to hold it. And then as the water levels succeed, then they'll pump it out a little bit back to the drain so it doesn't go into the okay that that that, that might actually work but if it's like heavy rain then i don't know but it's like it can hold enough rain what i think about people that add himalayan pink salt or other like that to water oh i don't do none of that i mean all that extra stuff i can just i use a beretta picture i mean just because just because but the german water is pretty like it's pretty good, man. I've 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 actually sampled it myself, so, and I still know people like within bio and over at Lonstro, so I know the water here is pretty good, and we get updates like on base if there's ever anything wrong with the water on base because we do you got to do weekly samples on a military installation. It's weekly samples, so there's never gonna be a moment where it's like there's a water scare that you don't know it. There there has been boil effects, you know, what I'm saying twenty four hour boils, but for the most part. They take care of all of that because even from the you got the the big water facility treatment plants that are off base that like do the whole city but then on the base you know they got smaller ones so even then there's still water stored on the bases you know what i mean without giving out too much you know saying information but the bases would be all right for at least the big base is probably like two weeks smaller bases maybe about a week but by then you should be able to get it up and fixed like the thornton composite reservoir outside of chicago which can hold nearly 8 billion gallons of wastewater and this combined sewer outflow facility in the Paradigat basin in new york <laughs> what up OT? designed to prevent contamination of the basin and nearby jamaica bay the Osteoids basin isn't designed to clean the scent that's an ongoing multi-pronged process this project was built to prevent further and sudden contamination of the sand from combined sewer overflow. The goal, according to French officials, is to resort to opening the sewer overflow gates that dump into the sand no more than twice a year, compared to the current rate of 10 to 15 times per year. Damn. Paris will continue testing as the Olympics rapidly approach, but Hidalgo and Macron have yet to swim in the sand. Even if all goes perfectly according to plan, a significant rainstorm could still contaminate the Seine, forcing open water swimming events to be postponed. Il y a des choses qu'on pourra pas maîtriser, c'est impossible. Donc il y a par exemple des bassins de rétention qui ont été construits, mais euh huge bah, storm you end up with a long rainy period. Si on se retrouve avec une période pluvieuse longue. As I was saying, if it rains too much then the idea of making the sand swimmable again goes beyond just the 2024 Olympic Games. It seems to be a good thing to start last in this annual race through Paris because the River Seine gets so full you could almost walk over the swimmers in front. It brings the city back to a time when the river was a place for Parisians to cool off in the summer instead of a biohazard. Once the Olympics are over, that becomes the next phase of this project. According to Mayor Anne Hidalgo, three swimming sites in the Seine will open to the general public in 2025, thanks to the Games. Près de 100 ans aussi après l'interdiction de la baignade dans la Seine. Oui, mes <laughs> amis, nous years, allons yeah. à nouveau autoriser la baignade dans la Seine. As for the plan to host the opening ceremony along the Seine, French President Emmanuel Macron has now said that there are backup plans if the security risk is too high. Whether or not open water swimming will be possible can only be determined hours before the events and will be at the mercy of rain. Meaning making the Seine swimmable in time for the Olympics is going to take a lot of work and Yay! a lot of luck. All right, cool. There we go. The Seine River. Can they rid themselves of the poop before Friday? So that means they need to start taking samples today. Well, tomorrow morning, they need to take samples. So come Friday, they can say, hey, we good to go or negative. We can't go. But man, I might go. I might stick my big toe in the Sin River. If I go next week, I might stick my big toe in the Sin River and just see what's, what's really cracking. 
That don't sound too bad. I'm going to try to give me a ticket to the Eiffel Tower. I'm going to try to go up to Eiffel Tower. The first time I ever went up to Eiffel Tower, I actually walked all. Well, I walked the first, I think it's 300, and then it's 400 to the next one. I walked all the stairs up and down. So, because there was only one elevator working and the line was too long. So, I was like, man, I'm going to at least walk it, man, say I did it. But this time, let me get that elevator though. Now, I got one more documentary. Well, not really a documentary, more like just information on why no country wants to do the Olympics. 